This is a CNN special report. The shuttle Columbia returns. Here is correspondent Tom Mintier in Atlanta. Good morning. The space shuttle Columbia was set to return to the Kennedy Space Center, but NASA switched gears at the last minute, decided to bring it in at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Let's go now to a live computer generation picture from Edwards Air Force Base. They have already crossed the coast of California. They crossed about 30 miles north of Ventura at about 98,000 feet. That's about 90 miles away from the dry lake bed runway at Edwards Air Force Base. And then at 8.55 Eastern Standard Time, the double sonic booms could be heard 18 miles away from Edwards Air Force Base as Columbia broke the sound barrier. They are uh, now lining up on the runway. They are uh, probably not going to be able to see much. Uh, there it is right there. Touchdown uh, at uh, mission elapsed time, six days, two hours, four minutes, nine seconds. Uh, speed at uh, touchdown, uh, roughly 195 knots. Columbia rolling to a stop. They landed at Edwards Air Force Base officially an hour and 12 minutes before sunrise in the dark. But the high-powered xenon lights you could see at the end of the runway illuminated it. Usually they use an infrared camera so that they can see Columbia as it comes in on its final glide slope. We did not see that this morning. All of a sudden it came up rather surprisingly at the end of the runway. Uh, mission lapse time to touchdown once again is uh, unofficially six days, two hours, four minutes. Post landing per procedures, no deltas. Copy that, Fred. So Columbia has returned from space. Uh, they were 25 days late getting there, and now four days late arriving back. They were ordered home on Thursday. They wanted to bring Columbia home a day early to enable them to stay on schedule. NASA has a very ambitious schedule of five, 15 launches in 1986. They wanted to get Columbia back so that they could prepare it for its next flight, which is March 6th. CNN's coverage of Columbia's landing will continue here on CNN. The Space Shuttle Columbia finally comes home. I'm Bella Shaw. At the top of the news this morning, the Space Shuttle Columbia lands in the California desert. Joining me with that story is CNN correspondent Tom Mentier. Well, they may have averted uh, a risky landing at best at Kennedy Space Center. When they uh, took a look at it this morning, they decided to wait until the last minute before they made a call. They flew the shuttle training aircraft uh, several times over the Kennedy Space Center runway, but they noticed precipitation in the clouds. They had rain in the area, something that NASA will not allow the shuttle to fly through because it will damage the heat-resistant tiles used on re-entry, and it takes a lot of money and a lot of time to repair them and replace them, something NASA has not too much of either. NASA didn't want the six-day ride it's going to take now to bring Columbia back from Edwards Air Force Base to the Kennedy Space Center, something else they also wanted to avoid. But when they weighed the two, they decided they were better off going with a six-day delay of bringing the ship back than probably a one- or two-month delay of replacing the tiles. The effect on the next flight of Columbia, which is scheduled for March 6th, is unknown. NASA says they will attempt to make that deadline. It's only a short number of days that they will be able to launch Columbia again to study Halley's Comet because of the position of the Earth and the Sun. They need to be lined up just right, and that launch opportunity is limited to just a few days. If the delay of Columbia is going to be more than 24 or 48 hours, NASA may have to consider canceling the flight altogether, but that is something that they will be worrying about in the next week or so. Let's take a look now at the replay of the landing uh, at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Columbia returned an hour and 12 minutes before sunrise.
with the high-powered xenon lights li lighting up the end of the runway to provide them uh, uh, the ability to see where they were touching down. As they've said in the past, Edwards Air Force Base is a little more forgiving than the Kennedy Space Center. Had they tried to land in the dark at Kennedy Space Center, there is a large moat that runs alongside the runway, and any error there could be catastrophic. So they decided to play it safe, not go through any rain clouds, not go through the risks of coming into the Kennedy Space Center and possibly running off the edge of the runway. So Columbia may go down in the, in the record books as probably one of the most difficult delayed flights in NASA's history. It, uh, the experiments on board, they had problems with those. The uh, special lens adapter that they were going to use to study Halley's Comet did not work. They stayed up a couple of extra days, worked on it, and that didn't seem to repair it either. A couple of materials processing experiments also failed, but they did manage to launch a $50 million satellite for RCA Communications Company. That netted NASA $14.1 million but only a fraction of the total cost of the flight expected to run about $150 million. So Columbia has returned from space, but the race is just beginning, the race from coast to coast to bring Columbia back to Kennedy Space Center for its next flight, now scheduled for March 6th. Bella? Thank you, Tom. And we'll have more after this. I'm Bella Shaw. These are the top stories this hour. <clears throat> it was launch was delayed seven times, it's landing three times, and it finally touched down 3,000 miles from where NASA had hoped it would land. But the crazy quilt mission of the shuttle Columbia came to a dazzling end about an hour ago in the California desert. Per second. Uh, now in video. It was only the second time a shuttle has landed in darkness. The Columbia was to have landed at the Kennedy Space Center this morning, but bad weather forced the pre-dawn landing in California. During the flight, the seven-man crew successfully deployed an RCA communications satellite and conducted a series of experiments. But due to malfunctioning equipment, they were unable to obtain clear, bright pictures of Halley's Comet. The shuttle will be transported to the Kennedy Space Center next week to prepare it for its next flight, scheduled for March 6th. Carol, thank you. The flight of the Space Shuttle Columbia ended as it began with a delay. The spacecraft touched down 90 minutes behind schedule this morning and 3,000 miles from where NASA officials hoped it would land. CNN correspondent Tom Mentier is here with the story. Tom? Bella, they set two records, the beginning and the ending of the flight. Right. The most <laughs> delays ever in any shuttle program and the most wave-offs of landings. They tried to land at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, but there was some rain there. NASA made a last-minute decision to go to Edwards Air Force Base in California. It was clear skies, but it's also six days away on the back of a 747. Here was the landing this morning, about an hour and 12 minutes before sunrise. You see the xenon lights showing Columbia the way to the runway. About an hour and a half after that, the crew departed from Columbia after their seven days in space. They look to be in pretty good shape. The orbiter itself is in excellent shape, according to NASA. They say that this is a good sign for Columbia to be in such good shape. This could prevent any more delays and the possibility that they will make the March 6th deadline of getting Columbia back on the pad ready for another launch still exists. There are only a few heat tiles that are missing on Columbia, but other than that, they say it made it through the flight in excellent shape. So the big question now remains, will they be able to process Columbia back at the Kennedy Space Center in time for a March 6th flight? That is the biggest question that they're asking themselves, and Bob Seek, the launch director for NASA, says the chances are very good. We knew that 86 was going to be a challenging year, and the, the landing at Edwards <clears throat> for the first mission is certainly going to increase the degree of difficulty that we have in front of us, but we do not see it as an impact to our, our plan for the year of the manifest. What NASA hopes to do is eliminate some of the extra steps that they were planning on taking to get Columbia ready again. They were going to add an extra tank that fuels the uh, orbiter on orbit, with electricity. Instead of three, they were going to have four, or four or five. 
What they will do is they won't put that tank in. That will mean that the mission to study Halley's Comet on March the 6th, instead of being a nine-day mission, they will reduce it back to a seven-day mission. By doing that, they will be able to save a couple of days turnaround time of Columbia and ensure the possibility, just the possibility, of making it on March 6th as scheduled. And they also are saying, Bella, that uh, the first teacher in space is still set for next Saturday, but that schedule is extremely tight as well. They have no room for error. Should they get any problems in preparing the vehicle for launch, they may have to slide that back another day as well. Okay, Tom, I'm sure you'll keep us posted. We will.